Okay, so as we mentioned, the laugh track can be acute of students. Even if they don't find it funny, or even if they don't quite understand, it tells them that there's something happening in that interaction, right? Um, we, they don't need to necessarily get the humor for it to be helpful. As we said before, it's often when people break the rules of the situation. <laughs> and Seinfeld, a lot of the humor on Seinfeld, for example, is about breaking those social rules, right? Like this person did this thing, and you're not supposed to do that. Um, and I have an example from Curb Your Enthusiasm, which is a similar kind of situation where the protagonist does a lot of explaining of what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. This is the way this is supposed to work, right? So that then makes explicit some of that hidden, invisible cultural information. Um, and then, as we also said, the inappropriate things to say are usually not in the book. And we don't learn what's inappropriate until we make those mistakes ourselves. I have been in that situation. I don't know if any of you have you know, said the wrong thing. Right? Oh, that's not at all what I meant. And so people sometimes you know, are offended. You certainly didn't mean to offend them. right? You were doing the best you could with the linguistic resources that you had. Maybe transferring some strategies from your first language into the second language. Sometimes that's successful. Sometimes it works great. Other times, not so much. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted to, so that's an example of sort of praise, of little white line, uncomfortable situation when you, you know, say something that you don't mean. Um, apologies are something that is pretty common and commonly found in different kinds of popular culture texts. And so this is an example, unfortunately, I'm sorry, I don't have a visual of this. But um, one of my students found this in, in a movie called The Proposal. Have any of you seen it? Is it good? It's great. Okay, I gotta see it now. I have to see it. Um, I didn't have a chance to do it. This was just this year. So apparently in this situation, the father of the groom-to-be does something at a party. Do you remember? What does he do that he's apologizing for? They're meeting her for the first time. Uh -huh. um, and, and he's like really rude to, to her and to him and to everybody. Okay, so later he has to apologize. Okay, okay, so he's rude. He does something that, you know, they construe as offensive. And so and he calls her Maggie, and she can say she's like older, or so she says, I'm Margaret. Okay, and so he says, I'm it, and he just says, Maggie, <laughs> Margaret. <laughs> okay, so he's... For example, and he does a couple of things. Excellent. So disrespectful, not sort of honoring her wishes of what she wants to be called. And so then afterwards, they apparently bring this to his attention. And so the form of this apology Apparently, I wasn't the most gracious of hosts last night. It was a little bit of a shock to find out that you're getting married, especially when none of us even knew you were dating. The point is, I owe you an apology. We talked in my class a little bit. The students had a conversation about, is this a sincere apology, <coughs> or is it not sincere? And I'll ask you that question. I haven't seen the movie, so more, you, many of you are experts on this much more than I am. What do you think? Is it sincere or insincere? Sounds tricky because it says apparently uh -huh. they owe you. Aha, uh -huh. excellent. Like someone told him. Yes. Right, right. So this apparently distances the perspective, yeah. right? It's not saying I am fully taking control of the situation and owning up responsibility for it, but apparently I did this thing that's wrong. And then that the apology construction, I owe you an apology. Is that the same thing as saying I apologize? Uh -huh. Sorry. Uh -huh. So sort of that some detachment. Exactly. There's an extra word there. Why I owe you? Why not just I apologize? Right? It's just like when somebody tells you you owe him an apology or you yes. owe her an apology. So this is what he heard. Right, right. So he's doing that instead right. of somebody prompting him. He's sort of prompting himself. But in situations where people genuinely feel sorry, probably they'll accept some of that and they'll personalize it and they won't have that linguistic distance created by the O and the apparently. Very, very good to pick up on those points. Um, something, uh, apologies are frequently found by um, celebrities or politicians who have gotten in trouble for doing something. So there's a ton of apologies on the internet, like on YouTube, for example, right? When people get caught cheating, for example, on their spouse. And so it's really interesting to watch the various forms that those apologies take. For example, um, there was an apology by a senator, I think, someplace in the US, in North Carolina, I believe. And he, um, 
ended up uh, in a relationship with a woman from Argentina. And so as he, as this became public, he had to go in front of the press, press conference, and make a public apology. The first time I saw it, I was wondering what kind of speech activity is this? Because first he acknowledges somebody, one of his staff members, I've known him for a long time, our kids grew up together, they used to go camping, we've spent a lot of time, I was a Boy Scout leader for 10 minutes before <laughs> He actually come. Okay, here's the point. You know, I, I made a mistake and I was wrong and I shouldn't have lied when I said I was here and I wasn't there. So all of this lead up and then this apology. And so the same kind of reaction. The sense is, is he really sorry? <laughs> no, he's going through the motions of doing the apology, right? We can tell by the form it takes sometimes whether the person means it or doesn't mean it. Um, Apparently this was acceptable in this case because in his interlocutor, Andrew said, okay, accept it, right? Whether he really accepted it or not is, is a different question. We have to watch the movie to find out. Um, so other ways of apologizing. I apologize, I owe you an apology. What else can we say to apologize for? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, and that's really common, I think, in more casual, spoken contexts. Apologize has a more formal connotation. Usually we think about it in, yeah, like these kinds of situations. Um, so we have those kinds of constructions, of course, that we're all familiar with, but we can also accept responsibility for the offense, right? Something like, oh, it was all my fault. Um, we can pro provide an explanation or account, right? I'm sorry, the bus was late, I was, had everything ready to go, but I couldn't get out of the house in time and I missed the meeting because of this thing. And oftentimes, ap apologies take these forms where these different elements are combined. So again, it's usually not just, I'm sorry, sorry, right? that's not enough, we need more, we need an account, an explanation, something else like um, offering to repair the situation, sorry I spilled red wine on your new white pants, can I you know, help you by washing it off or loaning you another pair to wear, something like that. Some of these things probably are cross-linguistic, I would imagine, because they're not tied to the language, right? They're sort of um, more rhetorical kinds of, kinds of strategies. Um, we can also give a promise of forbear forbearance, so a promise that it will never happen again. Okay, I'll ne I'm sorry, I know I've been late the last few times, but it'll, I, this is it. It'll never happen again. I'll fix my situation at home. I, I know I can, can make it on time.